Have you ever seen the movie Bonnie and Clyde? If not, you're in for a ride. Released back in 1967, this flick stirred quite the buzz. Picture this a pair of young lovers turned criminals robbing banks and causing chaos across the country. But there's more to it than just action. The film's got funny moments, shocking twists, and some truly heart-wrenching scenes. So stick around because we've got plenty of fascinating facts coming your way. Now think back. When was the first time you watched this movie? Did it leave an impression on you? Maybe there's a scene that stuck with you long after the credits rolled. Share your thoughts with us in the comments below. We'd love to hear your stories. So sit tight, grab some popcorn, and let's dive into the world of Bonnie and Clyde. Get ready for a roller coaster of emotions. In 1967, a riveting tale hit the big screens, captivating audiences everywhere. It tells the story of two lovers who take to a life of crime during tough times in the Midwest. Set against the backdrop of rural America, the tale delves into their risky adventures as they rob banks and dodge the authorities. A young waitress craving excitement meets a charming outlaw with a taste for danger. Together, they gather a gang and embark on a wild journey filled with adrenaline and romance. Along the way, they face betrayal, violence, and the relentless pursuit of justice by determined lawmen. The main characters, portrayed as individuals driven by their circumstances and desires, find themselves in a whirlwind of events. The woman, fiercely independent, embraces the thrill of their criminal escapades. Meanwhile, the man struggles with his own inner conflicts as he leads his gang down a destructive path. Throughout its runtime, the movie received high praise for its daring storytelling and exceptional performances. It earned numerous awards and nominations, cementing its status as a timeless classic in cinematic history. Gene Hackman and Faye Dunaway, both cast members of the 1967 movie, went on to portray significant roles in superhero films. Hackman played Lex Luthor in several Superman movies, while Dunaway portrayed Selina in Supergirl. Additionally, David Newman and Robert Benton, writers of Bonnie and Clyde, were also involved in Superman the movie. Warren Beatty, another actor from the film, was offered the role of Richard Nixon on two occasions in his career for Nixon and Frost Nixon. Faye Dunaway, too, faced challenges in her career as she believes the reception of Mommy Dearest negatively impacted her professional trajectory. She has refrained from discussing the film due to this. Warren Beatty, a key figure in the making of this film, held a significant connection to the project through his role as the godfather to Daisy Alexandra Silbert Torres, the daughter of his longtime friend Richard Silbert. During the film's development, Beatty extended directorial offers to several notable filmmakers, including George Stevens, William Wyler, Carol Rise, John Schlesinger, Brian G. Hutton, and Sidney Polak. Faye Dunaway, portraying the character Bonnie Parker, initially envisioned a practical wardrobe with slacks for ease of movement during getaway scenes. However, costume designer Theodora Van Runkel advocated for a more glamorous appearance, featuring long skirts, a beret, and a short jacket. This divergence led to the creation of the iconic Bonnie and Clyde look, which not only defined the characters, but also became a fashion trend. Notably, Dunaway continued collaborating with Van Runkel for many years, insisting on her for costume design. The interplay between these personalities, from Beatty's influential connections to the directorial offers and the collaborative decisions on character aesthetics, played a crucial role in shaping the film's narrative and cultural impact. Warren Beatty and Jane Fonda auditioned together for roles in Parish in 1961, but the parts went to Troy Donahue and Connie Stevens instead. Gene Hackman starred in three films based on John Grisham novels The Firm, The Chamber, and Runaway Jury. He and Dustin Hoffman, who were roommates, bonded over their admiration for Marlon Brando. They often played drums on their apartment rooftop, with Hoffman on bongos and Hackman on congas. They aspired to emulate Brando's musical talents, having heard he performed in clubs. In the late 1960s, a movie came out with actors who had interesting backgrounds outside of just acting. One of them, Michael J. Pollard, was in a popular movie in 1967 and also appeared on TV shows about space adventures like Lost in Space and Star Trek. Another actor from the movie, Dub Taylor, had a documentary made about his life in 27 called That Guy, The Story of Dub Taylor. This movie explored Taylor's life, showing more about who he was beyond just being an actor. Gene Hackman, who many people recognized by his voice, did something different from acting for a while. 
Starting in June 2007, he was the voice in commercials for the Lowe's Home Center store chain for a few years. His actors brought a lot of different experiences to the 1967 movie's cast, making it more interesting and diverse. Each of them added their own special touch to the movie, making it richer and more complex overall. Initially panned by film critic Joseph Morgenstern, the film underwent a remarkable transformation in his eyes, prompting him to publicly retract his negative review and praise the film. In a surprising turn, Gene Hackman, who portrayed one of the gang members, had a run-in with the law in his youth for petty theft. On the other hand, Faye Dunaway, known for her role in the film, garnered an unusual award for her portrayal of Joan Crawford in a different movie. In the realm of entertainment, there are stories that linger, tales of ambition, resilience, and the pursuit of greatness. One such story revolves around an actress and a fugitive, both seeking their place in the spotlight. An actress known for her captivating performances had a long-held dream of bringing her portrayal of an opera singer to the big screen. For years, the stream simmered within her, waiting for the right moment to burst into cinematic life. Meanwhile, there was a man, Buck Barrow, whose name became synonymous with a daring escape from the law. After nearly two years on the run, he made a decision that spoke volumes about his character he surrendered, facing the consequences of his actions head on. Behind bars, Barrow's humility and bravery caught the attention of the warden, who granted him special privileges. It was a testament to the complexity of human nature and the potential for change even in the most challenging circumstances. The actress, throughout her esteemed career, graced the screen in several acclaimed films, earning her a place among the greats of Hollywood. Each role she took on seemed to possess a unique charm and vulnerability, captivating audiences and critics alike. Their stories intertwine, painting a picture of dreams pursued and challenges overcome. From the stage to the screen, from infamy to acclaim, their journeys reflect the timeless allure of storytelling and the unwavering spirit of those who dare to dream. And so, their names are remembered as symbols of resilience and the power of storytelling, showing that dreams can indeed come true. Warren Beatty, known for his roles in various films, was approached twice by Oliver Stone for significant roles, including Gordon Gekko in Wall Street and Richard M. Nixon in Nixon. Gene Wilder, a talented actor, starred in five films recognized by the National Film Registry for their cultural significance, including Bonnie and Clyde. Dan Aykroyd, famous for his work in Ghostbusters and SNL, watched the movie on his first date. These anecdotes highlight the diverse impact the film had on the careers and lives of those involved. In the portrayal of Clyde Barrow, writers Robert Benton and David Newman initially scripted him as bisexual, a choice they deemed non-negotiable. However, director Arthur Penn disagreed, fearing that depicting Clyde as gay alongside other societal dysfunctions would alienate the audience. Warren Beatty, the lead actor, had no objections to the original script, but ultimately, Benton and Newman conceded to Penn's perspective. During a pivotal theater scene, the soundtrack features Ginger Rogers singing We're in the Money from Gold Diggers of 1933. Interestingly, although her voice is heard, Rogers herself is never seen on screen. In an unexpected turn, producer and star Warren Beatty rejected director Richard Brooks' suggestion of casting Gene Simmons as Bonnie Parker, citing her age as a deterrent. Brooks, who was married to Simmons, had envisioned her in the role, but Beatty held firm in his decision. 